headache. What are you? <laughs> well, hello and oh, welcome to the Plane Talking Airline Pilot Geek Safety Layovers Christmas Extravaganza Show 2019. Hello, Matt. <laughs> hello. How are you, Festive Smith? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm all right, thank you. How are you? <laughs> oh, did you enjoy where that intro? You, where do I know. you find these things from? It's hours spent on the... In, in, uh, in the house, yeah. You, you and I clearly spend way more time looking at different things on uh, the internet. I know, uh, I know. <laughs> oh, <wow>. <laughs> <laughs> Swiftly moving on. Yeah. Um, joining us is, uh, for our festive show this week uh, is... This uh, week? Well, or, I'm not doing this again. All right, okay. <laughs> joining us for our festive show... As always, he's in his stately mansion, supping on some mulled wine. It's Neville Bounds. I'm indeed, yes. Hello. And Merry Christmas to everybody. And uh, I like the way our dancing was very synchronised, though. Very good, wasn't it? Yes, we've video, been practising, yes. haven't we? Yes, absolutely. Uh, absolutely superb. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, great to be here for the Christmas special. I, I noted, in fact, and you've been away a while, Nev, so it's fantastic. So I, I thought you didn't like us anymore, <laughs> I'll yeah. be honest. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> yes. that's a very, that's, it's, that's a fruit juice you've got there, right, Nev? It is, yes, yes, special grape juice. Yes, uh, that good, month. Yep. And it says it's 12.5%. Excellent. That right. What, what is that? Um, like like uh, commission, uh, is it? That's yeah. it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's <laughs> a pint of scotch there behind him somewhere, I'm Is sure. Is it? Mm. Excellent. So joining us as well for our festive Christmas show this year uh, is, uh, well, he needs no introduction really because he is the guy who a few Christmas shows ago actually did get some feedback to say that people thought he was actually Santa Claus. <laughs> it's, of course, Captain Nick. What do you mean they thought I was Santa Claus? <laughs> Bloody cheap. <laughs> Hi, guys, and thank you very much for having me on your show again. I'm, I thought, actually, after the last time, you might uh, decide not to invite me, but <laughs> obviously Nev didn't get the memo. No, and uh, no, nobody else was available, I'll be honest, Nick. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I can't blame them. No, no, fair enough. Yeah, yes. I just wasn't quick enough with the excuses. <laughs> yeah, and, and your fees are less as well, uh, Are Nick. they? Gosh, yeah, right. He's a lot, <laughs> a lot less expensive. <laughs> I, do, I doubt that. Anyway, no, no. moving on. I know, moving on. <laughs> Joining us as well for our festive show as uh, someone who is also dressed up festively for this show. He is uh, one half of the awesome Layovers podcast. It's Paul Papadimitru. Hello, Paul. Hi guys, how are you? Yeah, I had to done this, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's compulsory. It's it was in the memo and everything. Paul, Paul, yeah, last where? last year last year I didn't have it. That's why this year I had to find one. <laughs> where's uh, where's the Christmas tree for this year, Paul? Where's the Christmas tree? Is downstairs actually. Oh, okay. okay. And, and by the way, the other half, um, Alex, is saying hello from Maui, where he's Maui? right now. Oh, I see. Yeah, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> as you do, right? Yeah. So how how are things with you, Paul? I know you've been uh, jetting what your way across the world. You've obviously uh, had some very good experiences. One of which you've flown on a certain first class Ooh. suite. Yeah, I've just done the new first from Emirates from Tokyo to Dubai. That was quite something. I don't. I think I can stop flying after this. I mean, I don't think anything can top <laughs> that. Honestly, just impossible. No, yeah, no, that was. No, cool. I, and I thought I, I, I thought it was my last trip of the year. That's why I can uh, offer that to myself mm. with miles and everything. And actually, no, I have a client. I need to go on the twenty third of December. <laughs> I'll be in. Kazakhstan, it's minus 40 Celsius. Lovely. Okay, so maybe more than a T-shirt, <laughs> perhaps, for that one. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the, 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 the question I have to ask, though, and perhaps this is a little bit uh, rude, and I apologise in advance if it is, uh, did you actually partake of a shower? So there's no shower on the oh, 777, no, 300ER with not, that new... Oh. Yeah. But I did, afterwards, I had a first class in a 380 uh, back to London from Dubai, and there are showers in that. Yeah, yeah. I've done the showers in my life four times. Okay. I mean, must including be... one in Etihad, actually. So three times in Emirates, yeah. Mm. Is, is... Look, Boeing have got enough electrical problems without adding any water to the equation. <laughs> <laughs> well, th there is that. Yes, absolutely. Hello, Captain Al, by the way. Yes, you may have, may have recognised that voice there joining us as well. Is uh, the uh, the best half of the oh. plane safety oh, podcast no, oops sorry Play nicely. we love you pip really it pip is, is here course, by the way but we're having some technical we issues for some reason him. we can't hear him it is of course the legend that is captain al jingle balls uh, bells everyone <laughs> bells. how are you doing uh, merry christmas everyone <laughs> so where whereabouts in the great europe are you uh, this uh, fine evening al 
I've been enjoying the beautiful December sunshine of Bucharest, where it's oh, been wow. 17 degrees Celsius today, oh, plus gosh, 17. Great. It's a lot warmer. 17? War- 17? Like I say, it's a lot warmer yes. than it is here, certainly. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, beautiful sunny day. Oh. Well, thanks for joining us, uh, Al. It's nice to, uh, nice to see you. Nice to get you on the show again. Oh, it's all right. I didn't have anything better to do. I, I went to the <laughs> toilet earlier. <laughs> so. <laughs> thanks for that, Al. Oh, As always. Thanks. Um, <laughs> yes, and also <laughs> joining us uh, on the festive show this evening, he's everyone's... Thank you. Everyone's favourite uncle it is, of course... Uncle Micah. Merry Christmas. Cheers, everyone. So nice to be here. Don, we now are gay apparel, and I just wanted to light up your day. So <laughs> oh, here I am from Portland, Maine, where it is currently minus two Celsius, which makes it 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, well, I mean, that's very chilly. That's very that chilly. is very chilly, absolutely. Uh, of course, the, the, one more person still to add yes, to the group. We have saved the best till last, oh, obviously, that's as absolutely. we do on the show. Well, uh, certainly the best looking. Oh, well, yeah, that is <laughs> yeah, true. So, amen. the best till last, she's joined us. Uh, Which isn't saying much in view of the rest of the, you know, hey, contributors, hey. really. <laughs> isn't he? Oh, he's such a charmer, Alex. Joining us <laughs> from her five-star hotel oh. is, of course, Myla. Hello. <laughs> I'm currently in northern Norway somewhere. Oh. Um, it's a very swanky looking Flying the Christmas present. So, but it's good to be here. You were saying it was... Somewhere was... remarkably close to the North Pole, where you are. Mm-hmm, definitely. Ah, uh, she, yeah. she's got to go and see Santa, that's what it is. She's not working at all. <laughs> <laughs> How, how's the flying going, uh, Miley? Are you enjoying the uh, the chilly weather? Yes, it's lovely. I did my first on snow landing today. Oh, so it's a really nice landing. Um, a bit Very tired. good. <laughs> Sounds a bit scary. I don't did know. you manage to stop, or did you just go yes, straight well, into the hotel? Not, I, just, I just gave the controls to the captain. So then right. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yes, oh. yes. Well, 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 the thing is, if the snow's deep enough, stopping isn't the issue, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there is that. Yeah. Even crisp and even. That right. sounds like yes. a pizza. It does. Oh, yes. Oh, don't. I haven't had my tea yet. I'm hungry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they could fit skis to your aircraft. Ah, I, I, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Anyway, please. Uh, snowballs. Th- <laughs> your pardon? Uh, snowballs. You know, throwing snowballs. Anyway. Uh, right. Thanks for playing. Uh, <laughs> moving swiftly on. So we've got... Well, I thought that's if you just fell into a, a snowdrift up to your waist. You got snowballs. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that uh, the difference between uh, snowmen and snowwomen? Quite possibly. Snowballs. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Isn't there that thing about not eating yellow snow? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, or brown. Yes. Or br- Definitely oh, don't oh, eat the brown. If you've got to go for anything, don't go for brown. Well, that's what Frank Zappa said. Watch out where those huskies go and don't you eat that yellow snow. <laughs> I need, oh, I need you, gin. Uh, <laughs> so whilst whilst you're all sitting at home listening to this Christmas show, enjoying your festive din- uh, dinners and meals, which I hope you all are now, uh, we've got loads to get through on tonight's show, including some festive... How many families across the world are actually sitting down to their Christmas dinner and someone goes, I just tell you what, shall I put Plain Talking UK on whilst we have our turkey? <laughs> all right, Al, all right. God, I'm I'm not, I mean, the listening figures are good, but I think that's a little optimistic. Maybe yeah. Boxing Day for sure, but you know. Yeah, no, no. no okay. And to be fair, if they're going to if they're going to choose if, if they're going to choose a, an aviation podcast to listen to, it's certainly going to be us. It's going to either be APG or Airplane Geeks. Well, that's, that's, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and and doesn't it make sense that they would listen to us? Because if it's going to be turkeys, they get all these turkeys together. Oh, right? I see <laughs> what you did there. I like it. <laughs> Stuffing. Anyway, I'll tell you what. I'll give you some feedback in the new year when I've got the entire family around. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. uh, just Please. as we're about to, Please, about no. to curb half the turkey, I'll say, "Oh, shall I put the plain talking UK Christmas special on? I'm on it, you know." Yeah, and I'll oh, see yes, how it Daddy. goes. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then record the reaction. That'll be great. Lovely. It'll anyway. Be, it'll be our first X-rated podcast. Oh, yeah. God, it already is. Um, <laughs> so, um, yes, as I said, we've got news, Christmassy, festive news stories to do. We've got a little segment, little Christmas story from uh, Uncle Micah to bring you as well. Uh, we've also got a special festive Christmas quiz uh, feedback from uh, Captain Nick. Uh, which is um, rather amusing, I will which say. Which I think silly, because I think he's going to give all the answers. He away. is going to give the yeah, answers. So if anyone's yeah. going to uh, do the Christmas competition this year, uh, Nick has all the answers. So make sure you listen, stay tuned for Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yes. And we've also and got... he does take bribes. We've, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, £20 and a brown envelope, uh, <laughs> and I'll send you uh, a, version, a copy. 
Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we've also got a special festive Christmas quiz for the hosts, uh, the guest hosts on the show this week. So uh, that should be fun. Good, lovely. Let's test their knowledge of okay. aviation. Yeah. Are there any show notes, by the way? Am there I is, yeah. Is there they fun? were emailed to you this as well. This is going to be a bit of a shock, but I haven't read them. <laughs> Good luck, okay. Then. Good oh, luck, lovely. everyone. So, so is this show any different from any of the others, man? Hey, yes. No, good Starting point. off good the point. new well, year with yes. some show note reading. Yes, okay. Oh, I've just received an email. I wonder who it's from. <laughs> when he gets here, can I have uh, Jeff on my uh, team? Uh, right, okay. Yes. I'll leave the numbers we're, up. We're about, to, we're about to be joined by Captain Jeff at well, some point. So, well, uh, Pip yeah. has pipped off, so uh, we're, we're back down to... Uh, Okay, so back down to three on each team. Three on each team. Yeah, but we've got we've we've got a we've got a Jeff about to join us. So uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, the TV Uh, star Jeff. Yes, absolutely. I know. Yeah, based on his uh, new hosting on the Weather Channel, don't you think he should just host the quiz? Well, that's true. Absolutely. I don't think I think we're all surplus to requirements. Let's be honest. So if everyone (laughs) has got the show notes to hand, we shall. No, Start no, no. Have, have they been sent out? Have they? Yes, they have. <laughs> yes. Is this for, for for today's recording or tomorrow's recording? <laughs> I'm so glad that you're that far away. In the- oh, <laughs> stop it! Because <laughs> it says says on on my phone here, Siri <sighs> found one event tomorrow from 18:30 to 21:30. Even Siri can understand the email no. that you think says that when you send something today. When you say tomorrow, you mean today. Good. Anyway. Commando's here. Hey. I mean, are, are you working for Amazon now? Yes. <laughs> yes. Indeed. Right. But, now, but okay. you haven't paid your £70, okay. so you're so not which, getting your Which team delivery. is... So, so Captain Nick... Uh, so Captain Jeff, I reckon, should join uh, Captain Nick. And okay. then Captain Al can have Armando. There you go, look. <laughs> oh. Well, hey. Well, hey, Baldy. How's it hey. going? Hey, Armando, I need to tell you, that is not how you attempt to prop swing an aeroplane. That is a dangerous position you find yourself in. Mm. <laughs> Actually, you need to speak to Captain Nick about prop swinging and how to start aeroplanes in hangars. Uh, yeah, yeah um, that was a long time ago. Oh, oh, like Armando now. had a full head of hair before this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what happened to yeah. your, like, all hair? <laughs> Well, well, let's, uh, let's, let's just let's get it, you know, let's just re- believe things for a minute, guys. By the time we finish this show, Armando will have a head of hair. That's true. Mm. He'll have a full beard. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. I was going to say, wouldn't you like to know, Myla? Yeah. Well, yes, quite. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did there. Lowering yeah. <laughs> the tone. That's my job. Oh. Uh, oh, there he is. There he is. There we go. Are you Mom. in your lunch break, sir? Uh, I am. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Good. Right. Anyway, moving on. Yep. Come on, producer. <laughs> You're the one pressing the buttons. What, what are we doing first? Uh, we'll do some news stories, if you like. Oh, so... Uh, uh, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Oh, you mean you're waiting for me? Okay. Yeah, waiting for you. (laughs) Okay. All right then. Everybody ready? Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Oh boy. (laughs) So, kicking off this festive Christmas show's first news story. And this one is on the... Hello? Someone's got their That's sound right. on somewhere. Uh, it's it's uh, my, oh, right, one okay. that's got a bit of background noise. That's so this one is on the stuff.co.nz. He's the McDonald's drive-thru. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah, order any ice cream at all. <laughs> he's, he's busy getting his, uh, his uh, McNuggets. That's what it so is. as we are all wearing, well, most of us are wearing festive kind of jumpers, uh, this uh, headline on the story then, US Airline Rewards Ugly Christmas Jerseys. Or Wee. jumpers, as we call them here. Uh, though, so Friday before Christmas is not a chill out day at the airport. But this year, if you are flying on Alaska Airlines in the US, you might give yourself a break by putting on a ridiculous holiday jumper. That's because the airline is offering travelers flying on December the 20th National Ugly Sweater Day priority boarding. Even if you're a total <laughs> Scrooge, it might be worth to dress up if you want some of that sweet, sweet overhead compartment space to alleviate your pain during one of the busiest travel days of the year. Jumpers aren't the only way Alaska is trying to make something very unfun. Alaska's loungers will feature holiday-inspired beverages and cocktails, including snowflake-sprinkled lattes, peppermint mockers, along with a special hot toddy cocktail, available on National Ugly Sweater Day, the company said in a press release. 
So it's safe to say, I think, um, I, I obviously wouldn't win that because my jumper's lovely. Um, right. Matt, you've got a festive jumper on. Out, if that was, uh, instead of Alaska, if that was El Al, they would be uh, snowflake sprinkled latkes and not lattes. <laughs> yes. Okay, maybe you don't. Latkes are potato pancakes eaten on Hanukkah. Ah, <laughs> I see. Ah, I see. see. I see. Yes. You I, know, I don't think this is such a good idea. If I'd been Alaska, I would not be uh, trying to invite people who sweat a lot and are ugly <laughs> onto my aeroplane. <laughs> I don't know if you get a choice, to be fair. Right? <laughs> You get an upgrade if you turn up with an ugly woman. Right. <laughs> <sighs> okay, that's, that's uh, half our audience Norwich, alienated. They need to open up a base there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, they couldn't afford to open a base in Norwich, as well you know, Al. Well, indeed. well there, there goes the five people that listen in Norwich. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Let's tackle Bungie next. Yeah. I, I <laughs> don't, Sorry. don't be diss in my town. No, that's that's Nick. about half. Of, that that's about yeah. twelve miles away. Diss. Oh, what Bungie? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, anyway uh, moving on to the next story. Let's. I mean, who are we going to give this story? Know. To, um... Not me. I've got enough to do. <laughs> Anyone? Okay. I, I thought you were perhaps going to dole them out for people. No, no, no. I just oh, literally because there was no clue in the shoe no show notes. Shoe notes. Who's doing what? Yeah, the no. shoe notes. No, no shoe notes. notes. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what. I shouldn't have had that second glass, should I? This... No, on the contrary, I think you should have done. Uh... <laughs> Actually, Nev, do you want to take story three? Story th- what about uh, story two? What are we doing with that? that we're not going to do that one because that, um, for some reason, the link doesn't quite... Oh, OK. Yeah, I was wondering why you had a story about I, Ursula von der... <laughs> I don't know what that's <laughs> doing there. I was looking at it. Um, I was, I was, what is that? Well, we can't mention the European Commission because we're a, you know, a, a, a politics-free item, aren't we? So Correct, that's yes, have to go. absolutely. Yeah, yes. Nev, Nev, <laughs> story three, please. Right. Well, it's uh, from the thepointsguy.com, and uh, we, we like him because... Uh, he's a nice chap. He, he is, and he's got some, some good ideas, actually. But uh, it says, slightly unfortunately, uh, get your tissues ready because wet WestJet's annual Christmas video... <laughs> I thought WestJet was better. Yes, as you were. <laughs> uh, the Christmas video is back and better than ever. Uh, every year around Christmas time, Canadians' low cost carrier WestJet delights flyers uh, with a heartwarming video to get everyone in the holiday spirit. This year's theme is to give or receive, and it's sure to put a smile. They're bringing pretty women to Norwich. <laughs> <laughs> What a top! What a top airline! They're flying them in by the by the ten load, so that yeah. they don't upset too many people. I'm not talking but, about. Um, just I'm not going to talk about tissues with you, Nev. I, I'm not going to tissue. I, I, I make... not. Uh, yeah. but moving on uh, with the article, if we can. Uh, in the video, families walk into a winter wonderland inside of Santa's hat. Uh, before they know it, <laughs> stop it. You're making up your own jokes now, aren't you? Uh, before they know it, find the dark air- rough. Oh dear. Uh, before they know it, the airline's unofficial holiday mascot. <laughs> Santa appears on screen and of course the children are delighted. Santa asks them to pick one of the gifts and explains to the families that he has a little game for them. Inside the boxes are presents that would make every family's Christmas wish come true. Uh, just have a think about this. A West Jet, a West Jet gift card for $2,500, a trip for two anywhere West Jet flies and two round trip tickets to London. But there's a catch. The families can keep their... The catch fab- is they're taking you to Norwich, not London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, not, that's not mentioned in the article, but it's a good point. Um, the, the families can keep their fabulous holiday gift, or they can choose to do, donate it to families who need it at the Ronald, Ronald McDonald House, a non-profit that provides support to families whose children have illnesses to keep them close together. Ebenezer Scrooge, which is another WestJet character, the lone descendant descendant of Ebenezer Scrooge, um, naturally encourages them to keep it for themselves. In the end, all of the families choose to donate their flights and gift cards to the families in need. Even more, they were all given the opportunity to ascend to, to attend the R- R- Ronald McDonald House in South Central Ontario and meet the children whose lives they helped change. 
uh, feeling generous this holiday season? Well, uh, we are as well. You can donate your miles to a host of charity organisations so that they'll go to uh, who needs them most. Uh, uh, so, uh, anyway, Captain hey, Jeff. Jeff. Uh, yeah, hey, Jeff. Jeff. Uh, speaking of so, Santa's sack, here's Jeff. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, Jeff. Actually, it's not Jeff. He's Jeff too. Thank well, you. Yes. And, I'm Jeff um, too. What, what's the weather like, Jeff, uh, as you're experienced in this area? The weather outside is frightful. Actually, it's very nice. Nice. How's your broken aeroplane? It, uh, they fixed it. What? Yeah, they fixed it. So I'm here in Atlanta now. <laughs> hey. Oh, right, well done. Oh, oh, well done, you. Is that the sun? So, yeah, I found a... You haven't seen that in a while? No, that's the cargo pilot. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, poor my <laughs> love. Sorry, that was a bit below the belt. I do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you remember the last time you saw actual daylight, Myla? <laughs> yeah, well, I've kind of seen like a dusk, but not really. It's a nice one, I that, think, just now. Yeah. I suppose so the show subtitle season... Al goes below the belt with Myla. Right. Okay. Oh, and uh, again, and um, moving yeah, swiftly, swiftly on. Swiftly on. Uh, yeah, but, um, but wait a minute. For, for those that don't know, <laughs> Myla flies overnight and she works overnights, but she's also flying way up in northern Europe where there's no sun anyway. No, so it's no. great. Quite right. Absolutely. Apart from in the summer when you can't get rid of the blighter. <laughs> There is that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's always yeah, in the yeah. way. You're like you're sort of like in your face. So Armando, do you want to take story number four? Hello. <laughs> that be a no I think he's looking for the story. He's, he's actually, in the drive-through. We've lost him. <laughs> We've lost him. Oh, I think he's gone through the car wash now. Has he? Right. Okay. Uh, Micah, do you want to take story number four? Sure, this is from uh, Travel and Leisure, and over 47 million people are expected to fly U.S. airlines during the peak holiday time. And a total of 47.5 million people are expected to fly all over the world on U.S. airlines during Christmas and New Year's holiday, a 3% increase from last year, according to the airline trade group. In a report by Airlines for America, the group predicts that an average of 2.6 million passengers would fly each day during the busy holiday season, starting on December 19th and ending on January 5th. That's an increase of about 72,000 passengers per day this winter. The busiest day for travel will be Friday, December 20th, when 3 million passengers are expected to travel. That's followed by 2.9 million passengers expected on each Saturday, uh, expected each on Saturday, December 21st, Friday, December 27th, and Thursday, December 26th. Conversely, if you're looking to avoid crowds as much as possible, the trade group suggests your best bet may be to travel on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and New Year's Eve. Uh, throughout this year, we've seen the steady gains in air travel demand, and this will be no exception, says John Heimlich, the vice president and chief economist for the Airlines of America, and also the man who created the Heimlich Maneuver. Buoyed by, <laughs> <laughs> buoyed by a healthy economy and plentiful affordable air <laughs> services, travelers once again are expected to take to the skies in record numbers. And I think that's enough of that. <laughs> safe to say they'll have more passengers going through the US than uh, Norwich will have uh, this Christmas. Right, yes, yeah. okay. <laughs> Can we leave poor Norwich alone, Oh, okay, please? we'll leave them alone. <laughs> Very you know what's interesting about that? No, 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 no. WestJet are going to double the passenger figures, aren't they, by just bringing an airplane in. <laughs> Uh, a friend of last night <laughs> last night a friend of mine is trying to get to new york for uh, christmas and she was debating driving or flying from up here and i said fly you'll find some great deals if you leave christmas eve and come back this saturday right after christmas and sure enough in terms of uh the uh, this time of the year 237 dollars round trip from or, or return from portland maine to new york is a very good deal and traveling on very empty days just as that report said wow Wow. Hey, Jeff, are you seeing that increase? Are you working over the holidays? Uh, no, I'm not. After uh, tomorrow, I'm off until January. Ooh. Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, the joys of seniority. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I didn't even have to come in today for this one. I wish I hadn't now. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 no, sorry. yeah absolutely. Well, you know, in hindsight, such a wonderful thing, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> It is. So taking up story number five, Paul, I think uh, you should have yeah. this story. <laughs> Obviously, since I said I flew Emirates, just uh, so I've experienced that story. First, I'll read it, and then I'll tell you what I've experienced. Traveling abroad for the holiday season and missing out on a Dubai Christmas? 
to buy Christmas. I'm not sure about that, but mm-hmm. not to worry, as Emirates will be celebrating festivities in the sky. The Dubai airline will be serving up to up more than 500,000 Christmas meals and select routes from today. That's That was Monday, December the 9th to Tuesday, December the 31st, along with a selection of the best Christmas classics to watch throughout flights. Emirates' signature festive menu will feature turkey with mashed potatoes, green peas, baby carrots, and cranberry julie prepared by the airline's chefs. As uh, for its festive dessert, passengers can expect milk chocolate mousse topped with a Christmas chocolate button. Flying in business or first class, expect roasted turkey and apricot stuffing, roast potatoes with Brussels sprouts and turkey bacon, along with uh, cranberry julie. Oh, they really love that julie. Uh, to finish, expect the Santa and Spy Christmas chocolate cake or a chocolate gingerbread gingerbread cake. Little ones will get a specially prepared turkey dinner with a chocolate snowman cookie, along with a chance to get a limit, limited edition Emirates Fly With Me animal toy, Lumi the Snowman. I didn't Unsuitable get that Unsuitable for children under six. <laughs> Not from Norwich either. Um, hey, <laughs> look, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be Christmas without a classic movie to watch. And passengers can expect the Polar Express, Elf, Home Alone, Rudolph the Red Nose, Reindeer, and It's a Wonderful Life, and many, many more. The special Christmas service will be available across routes from Dubai to Australia, New Zealand, the UK, Europe. The UK and Europe are not the same, as you can see in the article. Uh, the United States, South Africa, and the uh, Philippines. Careful. There you go. <laughs> Hello, I'm just we're, saying. We're, it's, uh, slipping into political areas, moving on. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> so I flew, I flew first class, as I told you earlier, from uh, Dubai to London. So the first, the, the Japan to Dubai, there was no festive. It's not included in that list. And plus, it was a night flight anyway. But the second one, I, had, I have the photo of the menu here. On the appetizer, there was also prawn cocktail, poached king, pro, poached king prawns with Marie Rose sauce and fennel with lemon and herbs. So each of the items menu that were Christmassy had a little tree next to them. On the main course is the roast turkey they actually talked about and the dessert. They call it the Santa's Belt. The Santa <laughs> Belt. Layered chocolate and cranberry cake topped with a cram, uh, cranberry glaze. That, and I tried some of it. It was really good. Santa's belt, that's a shot of bourbon, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, last, last year, uh, and then I move on, I promise you, I don't want to hold the microphone, but last year I did fly uh, Lufthansa also in December to Kazakhstan, and they were serving actually also some turkey related. It was really good. That was really fun. I just want to know who the devil eats uh, turkey with mashed potato. I mean... That's <laughs> me, me. Now, come on. You, then that's because you're Welsh and you obviously don't understand. No, mashed potato, boiled potato, roast potato. Oh, well, that's okay. If you have all three, that's right. You've got to have roast, though. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. Turkey with in the UK. Seriously, I have no roast idea. potatoes. Is it roast? But actually- roast potato, boiled potato, mashed potato, mm. braised red cabbage, roasted parsnips in honey, For Brussels sprouts. Smash. Uh, actually, actually, actually in, in 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 the menu I had there was no mashed potatoes. It was uh, potato potato wedges. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's not better, right? Potato wedges. Potato <laughs> wedges. Out right of McDonald's. What can I say? Oh, wow. <laughs> Just for the record, I'm on my lunch break and I haven't eaten yet. But <laughs> well, the good news, coffee. Amanda, don't Coffee's. worry. The good news is that just today I received an email from DoorDash telling me that I'm getting 50% off today. So if you give me your location, I'll order a Big Mac on wheels for you. Yeah. Right. Denver oh. Airport signature FBO. Thank you, Al. <laughs> <laughs> oh, moving swiftly on to the next story in the list then uh, who's going to have this one Myla how would you like story number where are we story number six six yeah yes oh yes let's see this is on people.com let's see if the link works open um, airport workers make Christmas tree entirely out of items confiscated by security. Oh, that's awesome. The five ed- educational masterpiece is intended to remind travelers about prohibited items. Jeff, I hope that noise is a keyboard and not what I'm imagining. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's the Morse code coming off the Mad Dogs. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> that, so is, is, this, is, this, mic, is this mic not working? <laughs> not working. No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's coming up. It sounded highly dubious. <laughs> wow. Anyway, Myla, continue with your festive story. I appreciate that Myla has that effect on people, but yeah. normally, you know, close doors, close doors. Uh, well, quite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, then, one more time. Yes. Shall I start good, over? Good luck, everyone. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> carry on, Myla, carry on, carry on. Here we go. Uh, airport workers make Christmas tree entirely out of items confiscated by security. The five-foot educational... Educational masterpiece is intended to remind travelers about prohibited items. This airport put a funny and informative twist on decking the halls. As the final countdown to Christmas begins, even airports are spreading some cheer with elaborate decorations and displays. The Vilnius Airport in Lithuania, for example, felt the holidays were a perfect time to remind travelers about safety regulations in a very crafty way. Instead of bringing in a classic Christmas tree, Workers at the airport designed their own out of prohibited items confiscated from travelers carry on luggage by airport security. So, and then it's mainly made out of scissors, I guess. There's a picture there. Maybe Matt can show it. Nope. Next. Nope. <laughs> but, but... <laughs> You're right. I can't. I can't, thinking, I can't, I can't, can't help thinking that wherever this airport is, um, you know, scissors are a Big seller. It's really in, big in seller. In Vilnius. All right. If you're listening, Myla told you where it was. <laughs> yes. In, now have in some respect story. from your treasured guests, please. Uh, and you're going story, to tell yeah. us where Vilnius is, aren't you, Carlos? Yeah, it's in the... Right, good, lovely. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so there we and go. the thing I love is that they put all these confiscated items in the middle of the bloody airport. <laughs> <laughs> Help yourself. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. If you want a pair of scissors, here's some. Here's a switch knife here, and or a gun and some bullets. I'll um, tell you what. You can cause some serious trouble with one of those items on that tree. There's a there's a set of nail clippers, <laughs> and, and also safety scissors. Oh yeah, there is so some safety scissors. Yeah, I bet yeah. there's a knitting in, in needle in there as well. There's a there's a bicycle spanner there. I mean, who's going to get hurt with a bicycle spanner? But there is that handy handgun, so you never know. <laughs> you <laughs> never know, quite. That reminds, it all reminds me of, of what happened just a couple of weeks ago at Dubai Airport on the way to uh, the air show, uh, where the uh, security fellas wanted to have a look inside my my Peli case, oh, yes. and uh, um, I was trying to explain what what the muff was, uh, and I said, "Oh, it, it's part of a shotgun mic. I, I mean, I mean, I mean a rifle." Oh, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's, that's and it just old. went from bad to worse. Really. So yeah, awful. That is that is not a good word. Do you want to not say? Ideal. No, not not not, no. not there. Absolutely. So um, I, I just just I had a story like that in, I think it was Bulgaria. I'm not exactly sure. Sofia Airport. I think they they were scanning my my carry on and they so uh, oh, they my... bothered to do it that day then did they <laughs> yeah, exactly right <laughs> <laughs> you know that airport right and uh they saw something that looked like uh, they didn't know what it was it was the microphone like the one that i have in front of me they thought it was let's put it uh a... okay <laughs> <laughs> That is well, not long, where I thought we were going with that. As long as it runs on 48 volt phantom power, I think we're okay. <laughs> okay. In, in all these years, I'm pretty sure that's the first time that word was used in PTUK. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm we're so, going to have to I'm find so the bleep sorry, guys, for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bad. Yeah, yeah. Be bad. I'm so sorry. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's, a, it's a technical word. It's it's not a... <laughs> that's like a... 36, like 30, a sort of stop it! Piece, yeah. isn't it? Oh, Which, no. <laughs> They were, they were so and very very Christmassy. They were all blushing red by asking me what it was. Yes, yeah. I can imagine. I can imagine it was a very crimsony colour. Yes, indeed. So <laughs> I, I, I think we've we've sunk to a massive uh, massive New low, low massive Absolutely. low here. <laughs> and you said you put it in your mouth on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, stop. So we're gonna we're gonna go from this massive low to a massive high now with story oh, number seven for Nev. Okay, right, oh, right. Luckily, you've given me plenty of notes about that. Yes. I know he likes know. to do that. That, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. So well, whilst you're loading it up, Nev, I can tell you it comes from what must be an Australian website because they're giving me the weather forecast and uh, it says that it's 44 degrees and sunny. 
Yes. Wow. It's, oh, wow. It's, oh, I mean, Unfortunately, assuming, it's I'm from Nashville, that. Tennessee. Yeah, I'm <laughs> assuming that, that's not degrees Celsius. So, so 44 degrees and sunny in Nashville. Hmm, okay. So, so Nev, 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 what is this gardening story all about? Well, yeah, this is uh, all about uh, a man that's uh, flying into Nashville out of Seattle, was hoping to bring the South a green Christmas before he was caught by Metro Police. Uh, according to court documents, uh, Somphone Tamaraj, 57, was caught with over 80 pounds of vacuum seal marijuana disguised as Christmas gifts inside three bags of luggage. So uh, all the gear and no idea. Uh, plainclothes officers were working the flight when the drug-sniffing canine alerted them of narcotics coming from uh, Nautica's suitcase, unloaded off a flight from Seattle where marijuana is legal. I didn't know that, actually. Um, three more identical bags were unloaded, and the odour of marijuana was also detected in the two uh, other bags. An affidavit states that not only could the canine smell the drugs, the police could smell them as well. Uh, the officers saw an Asian male later identified as Tamaraj pick up all three bags and load them onto a bag cart. He was almost at the exit when the officers approached him. He admitted the luggage was his and then consented to let officers search the bags. Uh, after getting the key from Tamaraj, police opened to find what appeared to be several wrapped Christmas gifts in white towels. Uh, and while the intent of the gifts may have been to spread Christmas cheer, the contents weren't legal. Uh, police found 25 vacuum sealed bags with 84 pounds of marijuana, an estimated street value of nearly $175,000. 18 kilos in real money for those who are outside of the United States. Uh, thank you for the <laughs> European translation. There. I love how he just has that off the top of his head. That, he just that's knows. slightly worrying, isn't yeah. it? That's right. <laughs> anyway, uh, when asked by police what he does for a living... Well, I gave him 20 kilos, so I'm not quite sure what happened. <laughs> no... Uh, when asked by police what he does for a living for the arrest report, Tamaraj re responded this. Tamaraj was charged with possession of a controlled substance and booked in the Davidson County Jail on a $10,000 bond. Now, I've got a bit of a question for uh, my American chums on the podcast here. So we've just established that marijuana is indeed legal. Uh, in Seattle, um, but how, how does this work uh, between states, uh, either by, by car or by uh, uh, by air? I was going to actually bring that up because this guy, uh, in defense of him, although he's pretty much a moron, um, <laughs> didn't realize that it goes from state to state. Uh, certain it's legal in Maine; it's not legal in in, uh, in New York. Uh, and although it's, sometimes it's legal medically, sometimes it's legal recreationally, but it's not legal federally, and the federal government does not allow it. And the it's theoretically should be enforcing that law federally in every state that has legalized it, but they don't. But it's not legal to transport in your car. It's not legal on interstate transport. <laughs> this guy may not have known that because it's so predominant in so many areas, see Washington State being one of them, California being one of them, and now Maine, uh, as well as many others, that people don't realize that there are places where it is still illegal. Sorry, Michael, to interrupt. I think Nick might need your friend, Mr. Heimlich, there. He seemed to be choking. Right. Are you all right, Nick? All right. Uh, is it legal um, uh, in any amount, uh, Micah? So is, can you, 84 pounds is perfectly legal? Perfectly legal. Good lord. Wow. And and what's what's the status of the the airplane in the air? It's not one state regulation, I guess it's the That's it's federal federal law, right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Right. Wow. You heard it here first. <laughs> no, no, the, the reason it's gone silent is everyone is just booking their tickets now to these said <laughs> like, you know, locations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody's what wants I to be very relaxed for Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I've been I've been in Colorado for the last two weeks and I've had more than one request to uh to transport uh such uh you know, things back to North Carolina where it's not legal. <laughs> Really? No, here's an interesting one for you, uh, uh, Armando. Uh, if it's legal in the state uh, that you're in and you take it uh, and you're perfectly sober, you've got to come as when you get it, go flying, 
and they do a drug test on you which shows up that you took it in the last like two weeks or whatever I, I don't know how long it hangs around or they do a, a test on the hair in your head what hair oh. have you seen Arundo <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm seeing the reasons one. now well if, if he grew a beard yeah. now we know right but in his pubic hair oh, perhaps you shaved <laughs> <very well>. um, <laughs> right. so uh, I'm just curious uh, if uh, can they get upset with you if you've hey. been consuming in a state where it's legal? Well, I think it depends on your employer that's uh, giving you that drug test. But, uh, you know, it, technically, no. If you were in a, in a place that it was legal and you were consuming it, then so be yeah. it. Even now, though uh, your license is given to you by the federal authorities and they say it's illegal? I think that all boils down to your employer and okay. what their drug testing policy is. What does your employer say? Uh, it's zero tolerance for us, so <laughs> that is not damn, the reason that I damn, have. Damn, he said. <laughs> <laughs> removed all the hair. You need to have, the, you, you need to wax your arms. You know. Yeah, right. They have their ways. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Jeff, they could just pluck his moustache, couldn't they? Well, yes. Jeff's moustache has 30 years of history on it, so... <laughs> and about seven or eight years of soon. <laughs> yeah, it's a survival mustache. <laughs> exactly right. So, so, Captain Jeff. Are you getting this microphone now? Oh, yeah. Yes, yep. yes, we are. Okay. Oh, that's better. Oh, look at yeah, that. I used to have hearing, but that's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick, now Nick, did you want to take story number eight? Uh, I would love to take story number eight, which is from Florida today. Uh, Okay, what happened to Florida yesterday? I don't know. Anyway, weather looks great for Boeing's uh, Starliner launch from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Uh, so uh, one launch down and one more to go this week. And the weather looks promising for the high-profile launch that just happens to be occurring near Christmas time. At 80% go, as calculated by the U.S. Air Force, Boeing is getting ready to launch its Starliner capsule atop the United Airlines launch. I'm sorry, United Launch <laughs> Alliance Atlas of V5 Atlas V rocket, no earlier than 6:36 in the morning. Is that because they'll quit work after that or something? Um, anyway, uh, from Cape Canaveral Air Force uh, Station Launch Complex 41 uh, to the International Space Station. That's brilliant. The primary concern uh, for launch day are the cumulus cloud rule. Anyone know what the cumulus cloud <laughs> rule is? I think we're probably going to find out. You can't uh, accumulate too many of them. Oh, okay. Fair enough. You can't fly through them? And user ground winds. Well, Captain Al knows all about those. According to the uh, 45th Weather Squadron, in the event of a delay or scrub, weather drops slightly to 70% go for a Saturday launch. This mission is an important milestone for Boeing as the company gets ready to send astronauts to space once again from U.S. soil. Known as the Starliner Orbital Flight Test, this will be an unscrewed demonstration, I'm sorry, uncrewed demonstration of Boeing's uh, CST-100 Starliner capsule. Upon success of this mission, the next step would be the crewed demonstration mission or the screwed demonstration mission, which would send booing ast astronauts Chris Ferguson, Nicole Mann, and Mike Fink to the space station potentially sometime next year. Well, I guess it's got to be, really, because like, we're only a month away from next year. But Boeing isn't the only commercial company planning on sending astronauts to space from American soil. The other aerospace company, SpaceX, is also part of NASA's commercial crew program, which could also send its astronauts, Bob uh, Benken and Doug Hurley, for its crewed demonstration mission next year. But before that happens, SpaceX first needs to conduct the in-flight abort test of its Crew Dragon capsule. No earlier, scheduled no earlier than January the 4th. Well, isn't that amazing? Uh, Boeing are getting into the space race. I think that's fantastic. I mean, they figure they have to do something with all those 737 MAX uh, <laughs> pieces, <of> right? <laughs> well, uh, 
they are strapping them all onto a Saturn V, and that'll be how they get it. That's a good idea. Is it because they've run out of parking, and essentially what they're going to do is they're going to now start parking them on the moon? Is that what they're thinking? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, this as far is as brilliant. I know, the, uh, the, I think... the FAA doesn't regulate commercial space travel quite yet. So... Right, okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, so they can, they can fly them in outer space, no problem then. Yeah. <laughs> I personally this is, think this is fantastic that uh, the US won't have to rely on the Russians to get up to the International Space Station anymore. So uh, good on you, Boeing. <laughs> you say that was such a kind of interesting that it just sort of went back in time. It looks just like the 1960s capsules. Very interesting. Mm. It does look very much like the Apollo. Yeah. Very, like, have you guys, uh, have you guys uh, seen what? the movie First Man? No. Yes. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, Donald guys. Trump. I have to see. No. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> oh no. Uh, now, now, look. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change subject ever so slightly. Um, we, we've had some breaking no, no, hang on news. A I, I haven't given my uh, oh, okay. Soyuz joke. My apologies. Yeah, carry on. Which, which doesn't look like a 1960s capsule. It looks like a washing machine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, indeed, absolutely. Uh, We've had some breaking news, haven't we, Matt? Uh, Someone uh, famous has been spotted on uh, on our podcast. On our yeah, podcast, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's uh, uh, not not available over here, however. But um, yeah, we, we we sort of stumbled across this feed earlier. I don't know quite what this don't is know all about. Quite who this chap yeah, is here? Who's that this man is? Oh. Yeah, I don't know who that yeah. fellow is. Look, uh, Sax. Oh. Sax. He's handsome though. Yeah, he is. He's a good looking Look fellow. Isn't he? Absolutely. He's I love wow. up. He scrubs up. Oh, they say you put on weight when you go on television. Is that true? <laughs> Tell you honestly, we, we have really got some royalty on this show. I know, now, absolutely. He's he's he's, he's... <laughs> yeah. Now come, come oh, on, we, we have lots of things that we need to ask you about this, if you don't mind. I mean, this this is yes, true. Like your telephone number for a start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving it to you, man. No. <laughs> no, no, I don't want it from you. No, 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 just for the avoidance of doubt, okay? We need to get this out into the open. That was just a mistake, yeah. okay? It was just one of those, you know, late-night fumbles, okay? Right. Oh, dear. <laughs> Al already has my number. You're right. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, my commiserations to you uh, already, Jeff. The, so, so, come on, uh, many, many questions. So, I mean, it was uh, – unfortunately, I only had uh, a 45-second uh, uh, clip, and uh, thank you to James Bauer. You sent that to me earlier in the earlier in the week, but um, what? Um, how did it come about? I mean, that, uh, I mean, podcasting obviously is something that you do, you know, all the time. I mean, this must have been a new He's level moved nerve wracking, surely. He's moved on to TV. Yeah, he moved on to TV. Yeah. Yeah, this podcasting stuff is like <laughs> lowbrow. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite. So, so what was it like? Come on, I want to hear all about it. Well, I was. Okay, so uh, it was Colorado exciting. First for the nerves, did you? Yeah, yeah. I had to calm down a bit. Did they powder um, your nose? They did. They sent me to. I, I when I got in, the um, producer, Jim Cantori's producer, is the one that set this whole thing up. Contacted me, and uh, I got there very early in the morning. And he came down, opened up the door. A lot of security there, and uh, then I kind of met with him in a conference room. And then he said, "Okay, the first thing we're going to do is send you the hair and makeup." And I went, "Oh, cool! I've never done that before." So uh, they didn't touch my hair. Because it's perfect, of course. Oh, they just trimmed um, your moustache. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't touch. They didn't touch my moustache either. Well, uh, I they just put some the flame. Might and... fall off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they might. Yeah. So they they put the stuff on the skin. She said, "You have very nice skin." I said, "Oh, you tell everyone that, don't you?" She goes, "No." <laughs> so, anyway. Okay. You get so... her number. <laughs> no, I, no, I didn't really want to. <laughs> Well, I hope she's not watching this. <laughs> how, about, how about the lady you had your arm round? Did you get her number? <laughs> oh, I wish I had. Yeah, Stephanie Abrams. Yeah, she's uh, she's cutie. More importantly, uh, Jeff. More importantly, than, uh, Jeff. Did you did you plug APG? <laughs> plug who? <laughs> <laughs> Family show. Oh, oh, yeah, oh the pod, the podcast. Uh, well, I asked them to, and at the very end, they said you can find. Uh, Jeff on the Airplane Pilot Guy podcast. Oh, very good. <laughs> anyway. oh, no, no. no. <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> okay, take two. So, that, that, but, but I mean, uh, genuinely, Jeff, I mean, because I say this is the first time I've actually had the opportunity to talk to an actual TV star. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, was it really nerve wracking? I mean, how, how did it feel at the time? I've done it... some videos. <laughs> Stop it. Moving on. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I am not a TV star. Just want to make that clear. I just happened to be on a very short segment, and I'm talking about the television show. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but I mean, just but, to be sure. uh, I mean, it, it, all jokes aside, obviously this was this was live, presumably. I mean, how did that feel? Sort of, you know, sort of doing something like that live, where you, essentially once it's out there, I mean, there's nothing you can do to correct it. If you see what I mean? I know. Uh, you can't fix it in post, and that, I was uh, scared to death yeah. that I was going to say something extremely stupid, and I don't think I did. But no, uh, you didn't. How often did you check your flies? I did not ever. I was hoping that <laughs> yeah, Stephanie noticed. would notice it was open. <laughs> Bit drafty down there. I, I did see the whole thing, and Jeff did a great job. You saw the whole thing. <laughs> oh, you're flying. Here, let me show, let me show everyone. Oh, no. <laughs> Quick change camera. Moving on. <laughs> and Jeff's answers were great. The questions were terrible. I just wanted, I wanted to show everyone. Yeah, yeah. quite, yeah. Absolutely. So, so well, the bits I saw, I just wish that they would let you actually answer the question before talking over you. It didn't seem a lot of point to have a guest if you're just going to interrupt them all the time. And, and it was really it ridiculous was, questions. It was completely scripted. They uh, beforehand, the uh, producer said, asked me a few questions. I gave a, sh a few short bullet answers, and then uh, the, they showed me basically exactly what they were going to see on their teleprompters. And I said, "Well, my answer is not on the teleprompter." Uh, so I had to make up an answer myself, but oh. um, yeah, it was, it was all canned and I kind of knew what they were going to ask and they don't really give you much time to elaborate on anything. It's just before, I, before I could finish my sentence, they were already asking another question. So, oh, well. Oh. Way it goes. But nevertheless, you are you are now still officially a TV star. I think that deserves a little round of applause. Yay! 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 Yeah. Whoa! Exactly. And you can put it on your Whoa! showreel for your CNN application, can't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> I like I like podcasting better, to be honest. Yeah. 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 Most of the time, it's mm -hmm. a lot less stressful. I yeah. think TV pays better, Jeff. Yes, probably. Yeah. They didn't pay me anything. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you got to send them an invoice. Yes. yes. Send them an invoice. See the smile off their face. That's contribution disappear. to the coffee bar fund. Yeah, really. Jeff, okay. is, the, um, is the Weather Channel based in Atlanta? Yes, it is. Um, it, so I just went to their headquarters and their, their main studio, and uh, yeah, it was very impressive. Um, a lot of uh, yeah, Nav, you would have just loved seeing the behind the scenes and all the studio stuff going on. For all the uh, cables, honestly, I, cable management. Um, I had to I had to step over several cables. It's like Ooh. when I was following the producer, it was very dark. He goes, "Okay, watch out for that one. Okay, watch <laughs> out for that one." <laughs> I mean, big catered, uh, uh, big, did I mention big cables? Yes, big yeah. cables. Yeah, that was when you were lowering your fly, yeah. Yeah, oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> So we better we better cover story Sorry, we better cover story number nine uh, for for the last story because it's a good news story so I think we should cover this one after the year that we've had in aviation so uh, Jeff do you want to take the last story Yes I would love to I would love to so here let me get it pulled up pulled out um, <clears throat> PJ it's a nightclub yeah. Hold is this thing on? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> and you're live. My oh, live sorry. Three. Uh, my two, my bandwidth one. here is not very good. Uh, okay, sorry, is now, it TV the star Guardian. He's used to someone to hold his equipment his, for him. <laughs> and the microphones. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Who'd have thought it'd be me lowering the PG tone? Yeah. <laughs> his nightclub party for ex Thomas Cook employees. All right. Are you hearing me okay? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, a town center nightclub hosted a free Christmas party for ex-Thomas Cook employees who have had a miserable few months, you think? Uh, <laughs> PJs on Bridge Street gave the venue a, and DJ for free to the staff who won't uh, all be getting a Christmas party this year. Around 200 ex-cabin crew, pilots, engineers, and operations staff attended the party last week and all had a brilliant time. Brilliant. A special guest visitor from Seattle who flew in specially for it. 
<laughs> well, he was supposed to be there, but he got intercepted. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as good a party as they had hoped. Uh, Ro Rob Lees, an ex-pilot for Thomas Cook, said, We've all had a miserable few months, and this was greatly appreciated by all of us. There's a large number of ex-Thomas Cook crew that live in Warrington. However, other colleagues tra traveled from Abbey. It was great to meet with Abbey. Thankfully, most of us have now found new employment. Yay! At, uh, Dry distilleries Good. in Wonderful. Seattle. Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> Just, well, dispensaries, not distilleries. So la <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, my lunch break is over, so oh. I do have to go. Oh. It is oh. wonderful oh. to see everyone's faces. And so is it electrics, hydraulics, flight control? Uh, actually, I am done with, I'm done with ground school. I am, yeah, tomorrow we start sim, so. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay, when do you do your yeah. breakfast? Well, when do you when hey, well jumping into swimming pools? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so happy holidays, Merry Christmas to everyone out there. Um, hope to see you guys all next year at the 300. Yeah, absolutely. This is very yeah. exciting because Amanda yes. is coming yes. to the 300. Good so, luck, Amanda. Yeah, absolutely. So you'll get to if you right, come to well. 300, you'll be able to to catch up with him. Take care, guys. Bye, Amanda. Yeah, care, bye, 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 Amanda. Bye, bye, bye. Merry Christmas. Bye, Amanda. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. There's a lot of bye-byes going on there. Oh, okay. thank you for that. Right. Okay. Uh, right, so moving on with the next part of the show then, we have got a really, really special treat for everyone next. Uh, each year we obviously do a little Christmas uh, piece uh, which is brought to us by our main man, Micah. So, uh, Micah, this special Christmas message uh, you've uh, recorded and sent in to us and we're going to play that right now. Christmas 2019 in three, two. It's a funny thing. Actually, the more I think about it, the funnier it is. We've all quietly joked about it before, although I'm not sure we've ever said it out loud. But when you think about it, especially with my warped sense of humor, it's really kind of funny. What's that, you ask? Well, as it turns out, every time we've done our annual Christmas show, the plane talking safety, towel crazy, airline pilot geek spectacular, Christmas extravaganza, or, or whatever we call it, the one person that doesn't celebrate Christmas, and that's me, by the way, is the one to bring you our annual Christmas story. I'm not exactly sure how this happened. And don't get me wrong, I'm honored, really. But frankly, it amazes me that I have anything to write about. You see, I've never celebrated Christmas. And in fact, up until very recently, Christmas Day itself hasn't been a happy day for me. Now, I'm sure you're saying, how could that be? Well, let me try to explain. I grew up in a small town in northern New Jersey and was one of the three Jewish families at my elementary school. It got better when I got to high school, two more families showed up. Want to know something else interesting? Of that total of five Jewish families in my high school, only one attended the same synagogue as me and my family. When it came right down to it, I had no friends who were Jewish. This made Christmas Day a very lonely time. As a young child, I always felt rather left out on Christmas Day as all my friends were celebrating with their families and I was left out on my own. I remember one time when I was five or six years old, getting up early and walking downstairs to the fireplace in our living room just to see if maybe Santa made a mistake and stopped by our house. Thinking about that day makes me feel sad and lonely. And that's what I felt on Christmas Day for many years after. But as Jews have for many years, I've learned to assimilate, not in a negative way and lose my identity, but in a manner in which I could be who and what I am, but also enjoy some of the wonderful things from so many other cultures and philosophies. Now you have to remember that back in the 1960s, we didn't live in a society as inclusive as today's. In fact, when my parents were looking to purchase the house that I eventually grew up in, one of the places we were looking at was a town that excluded Jews. Not in a way that was legal, but it was made known that we weren't welcome. This kind of thing wasn't unusual back then. So when I started participating in Christmas plays and festivals at my elementary school, well, I was truly seen as an outsider. But that slowly changed. About the time I was in third or fourth grade, my grandfather and I were taking out the trash from his apartment in Brooklyn. In the large bin outside, we discovered a bright silver three-foot artificial Christmas tree in perfect shape and in its original box. Apparently, some family had just upgraded from this silver foil wonder. 
I asked my grandfather if I could have it so I could bring it to school for my classroom Christmas tree. I did that every year until I moved on to junior high school, and after that my younger brothers would bring it into school every year. I remember one Christmas time while my mother was out shopping one December afternoon, my brother Rick and I assembled that silver Christmas tree in our living room by the fireplace. We were both feeling a bit left out, and I suppose we did that so we could feel like we were a part of the season. When my mother came home and saw it, well, she pitched a fit. She said, what's that doing here? Almost screaming. She went on to say, I won't have that in my house. We're Jews, and this is a symbol of a Christian holiday. It isn't our tradition. She was right, and it was taken down and never spoke of again. But she was fine with me participating in others' traditions as long as I understood they weren't my own. To this day, that's something I appreciate, and I suppose it's allowed me to better understand and appreciate people and traditions from many different cultures. Now, some of you might be saying, wait, you have Hanukkah. Isn't that the Jewish Christmas? Well, no, it's not. Not at all. Let me give you a bit of a history lesson. Hanukkah is a post-biblical holiday. The actual Jewish Bible, being the Torah, is the five books of Moses and ends with the book of Deuteronomy. Historically, the story in Deuteronomy took place in the 1400s BC. Hanukkah comes from the 1st and 2nd Maccabees, which describe in detail the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem. This took place at about 165 BC, over 1200 years after Deuteronomy, the last book of the Torah. In Jewish tradition, Hanukkah is a minor holiday, referred to as the Festival of Lights, and in fact, it's more of a festival than a holiday more akin to All Saints Day than Christmas. Comparing a minor Jewish festival to Christmas just doesn't hold up. Although both holidays may at times coincide at the same time of the year, they are completely different and totally unrelated. Hanukkah celebrates the end of a three-year war with the Hellenistic king Antiochus IV and the rededication of the Second Temple in Jerusalem. Christmas is about the birth of the Christian Savior, the founding of a new religious philosophy, and something that took place 165 years after Hanukkah. Now yes, some Jews assimilate more than others. There's no central organization for Jews as there are for many other religions. In a way, different Jewish congregations have the ability to determine just how strict they will be about Jewish traditions. Basically, there are three groups of Jews, the Orthodox, Conservative, and Reform. The amount of religious doctrine followed by each group can vary and often changes over time. For example, I was brought up in a conservative household. We didn't generally keep kosher at home, but certainly did during important holidays, and always did in synagogue. But even the definition of orthodox conservative and reform can change over time. When I've attended conservative synagogues more recently, even my own shul back in New Jersey, the current rituals would have been considered more reform when I was growing up, but are part of the conservative movement now. Life and traditions change. It's natural. In fact, some would argue, when people don't assimilate and don't become part of the culture in which they live, it can lead to violence and war due to nationalism. That doesn't mean anyone needs to give up their own culture. It just means to accept and appreciate differences. Celebrate and value both the differences and similarities, and don't condemn others for having alternative thoughts. Okay, enough history and philosophical ranting. So I would go to Christmas parties thrown by my friends all through high school. I had a great time for many reasons. One, I was with my friends. Two, I was learning about other traditions, and I loved to learn these things. I remember my senior year in high school. After a fun and, might I add, rather drunken Christmas Eve party, my friends took me along to attend midnight mass at the local Catholic church, Our Lady of Mercy. I got some strange looks, that's for sure, but it was a spectacular and beautiful event. And by the way, I didn't attend another Catholic Mass until I did so with Captain Jeff some 44 years later. Fortunately, Jeff was able to keep me from being struck down by a lightning bolt for the sacrilege that took place back in 1973. Part of what made these experiences so fascinating to me was that I had taken a one-time experimental high school comparative religion course that was taught by local clergy. It was amazing, one of my favorite courses ever. That along with a college course I took called the English Bible, where we analyzed the character of God and how it changed from the Old to the New Testament. So here I am, at the fourth plane-talking safety crazy airline pilot geek spectacular Christmas extravaganza, 
or again, whatever we're calling it this year, and I'm writing another Christmas story. But being a Jew and writing things for Christmas isn't really unusual. It seems I'm not the only one who enjoys being a part of a tradition that's not our own. Did you know that most of your favorite Christmas songs have been written by Jews? Don't believe me? Well, here's a list. A Holly Jolly Christmas, Johnny Marks. Carol of the Bells, Peter Wachowski and Mikola Leontovich. Frosty the Snowman, Steve Nelson and Walter E. Rollins. Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, Ralph Blaine and Hugh Martin. Here Comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. That's Gene Autry and Oakley Haldeman. It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year, Edward Pola and George Weil. Jingle Bell Rock, Joseph Carlton Beale and James Ross Booth. Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Sammy Kahn and Julie Stein. Little Drummer Boy, Catherine K. Davis, Henry V. Arenati and Harry Simeon. Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, those are Johnny Marks again. Santa Baby, Joan Javits and Philip Springer. Santa Claus is Coming to Town, Fred Coots and Haven Gillespie. Silver Bells, Jay Livingston and Ray Evans. Sleigh Ride, Leroy Anderson and Mitchell Parrish. The Christmas Song, you know, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, Robert Wells and Mel Torme. There's no place like Home for the Holidays, Bob Allen and Al Stillman. White Christmas is Irving Berlin, of course, and Winter Wonderland is Felix Bernard and Richard B. Smith. Then there's one of the best-selling Christmas albums of all time by Barbara Streisand. And don't forget Neil Diamond's huge-selling Christmas album. So I guess my Christmas storytelling tradition is just me following along with the traditions of my people. Celebrate, appreciate, join in, but don't forget who you are or where you came from. So Christmas Eve this year, as always, I'll head to McDonald's and pick up a filet of fish sandwich and think about my niece Hannah and my father. Later on that night, I'll make my 43rd Christmas Eve call to Beth and catch up with her. And on Christmas Day, I'll get some Chinese food and think about all of you, all my friends all over the world, celebrating this special day as your own traditions call to you. And I'll hope that you're having a wonderful time. And then I'll start thinking about what I'm going to write for you next year. So from here in Portland, Maine, in the USA, Merry Christmas from your main man, Uncle Micah. <laughs> Who I just got a text message from saying he couldn't get off. He had to work, but he wants to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and wish he could be here with us. Oh, I've got you. some websites you can have a look at if he's having trouble getting off. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on with the Christmas show. My okay. God. Happy Christmas, next? Brian. Yes, exactly. Happy Christmas, uh, Brian. Thank yeah. you, Brian. Honestly. <laughs> you going to invite him next year, guys. Yeah, yeah, we Who's do. that? And Who? I'm not talking about Brian. <laughs> so... Anyway, um, <laughs> moving on, um, yeah, very quick, swiftly. Control with yep, control. It's time I'll for delete. it's time for the uh, the hosts Christmas quiz. Oh. Now we're going to split the uh, the the uh, guests up into two teams. So Team A, Captain Nick, you are the captain of Team A, along with Paul, who's your uh, FO, and Good Nev, man. who's your chief engineer. Uh, team B, Captain Al. Blimey, I'm going to regret this. Captain Al, you are the captain of Team B. 
Uh, Marla, you're the first officer, and uh, Hooray! Micah, you are the chief engineer. Oh, quite right. Yippee! Absolutely, yes. Okay, so uh, team. Go and do the walk round, will you? <laughs> team... <laughs> It's not raining, is it? (laughs) (laughs) No, this next bit I'm probably going to regret. But anyway, Team A, your um, chiming uh, noise to answer the question will be ding. So a a nice loud loud ding from you, Nick. Ding! Thank you. And Captain (laughs) Al... Incidentally, it's the name of the guy who owns my local Chinese takeaway. Right. And Captain Al... (laughs) I'm certainly going to regret this, but Captain Al, your chime in tone when you get your question will be <laughs> dong. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Okay. Am I, am, I the only... like King. <laughs> am I the only one with this uncontrollable urge to go ding dong? Ding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Matt's going to flash up. We've got 19. I'm, I'm, uh, fl- I'm doing no such thing. Matt, Matt's going <laughs> to. Matt's going to. Matt's going to put the pictures this on the, the screen. This is the filthiest show I think I have ever done. I'm oh. starting to get embarrassed, i got to tell you. Matt Smith is going to put the pictures on the screen for you all to see. There's 19 in total, with two of them being audio questions. Uh, Dong, so... that's Micah. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, that's one to me. So, right, teams. <laughs> Dong, <laughs> that's Nick. <laughs> Teams, okay, please, here come on. Here we go, okay. teams, right, so... Someone turn him off. Right, no, Matt's going to flash <laughs> up the but first... My wife has been doing that for years. Anyway, yes. here we go. Is it a team effort right. or a... Myla, stop interrupting, okay. honestly. So if Put you across my knee. So if every, uh, make sure everybody can see the Zoom feed. Here we go. <laughs> first uh, so wait one. A minute. Wait, before we start, before we start, so whoever knows it says either ding or dong first. Depends. It doesn't matter. Yes. Does it have to I want come to... from the captain? Uh... Whoever it is, yeah, whoever it is identifies it first. Yeah, okay. So yeah. So you've got you've got um how many is it? It's so it's uh, We've got nineteen in total. Two of these are audio out yeah, of the nineteen. So, so, so the first, the first one, so one first, coming up first, the first one. Here we go. Where is this wing tip from? So what winglet is that air is that aircraft? Ding. Oh Nev oh, Nev Nev. Airbus A330. Well done. One point to Team A. Well, that's because you're doing the walk around. Good job, Nev. <laughs> okay. Picture number Didn't two. Okay. My yeah. God. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Identify this aircraft, please. Where's the main gear? What uh, main gear Ding. is this? And uh, A340. That- well done, Captain yep, Nick. Absolutely. Blimey, bossing it now. Walked around that a few okay, times. the next one. What is this APU on? Which aircraft is this APU f- from? Dong! Uh, go ahead, uh, Captain Al. An Embraer 190. No, Ding. incorrect. Oh. Uh, over to you, Nev. Airbus A318. And you are correct. Oh. Well done, Ooh. Team A. Oh. <laughs> Bravo. Okay, Bravo. they're getting harder now, guys. So here we go. Question this number four. What flight deck is this picture from? Bing TriStar. No, incorrect. <laughs> Pass over to Team B if you can get this one. Oh, I know, but it's... It's 727. <clears throat> Mm. Oh, well done, Micah. Yeah, Micah well it. done, yeah. Micah. Well done. Okay, okay next one. Which, uh, what aircraft is this? What, on what aircraft is type this? is this? <laughs> it's got a hat Ooh. on. <laughs> What's the mother <laughs> of all creations <laughs> is that? Anyone? Ding. Oh, go oh, ahead, Nev. Be Nev. Um, I think that might be a 757. And you're correct. Well done, Nev. Wow. Wow. That's a wow. 757? Wow. Why has it got a silly hat on? Somebody tell me why it's got a it's silly hat on. It's a testbed aircraft. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. It's which... an aircraft from Norwich. Well, Stop yeah. it. Paul. <laughs> Inbred. <laughs> okay. Right. Why? Question number what? six. Which airline is this? Qatar Airways. Ding. ding, Qatar Airways. Who dinged? Who dinged? Oh. Technically, it was Captain Al. Yes, yeah, and I, I dinged true. when I should have donged. Yeah, yes, so okay. we get the question and Paul's going to answer it. Qatar <laughs> <laughs> Airways. Airways. All right, we'll give, yeah, we'll got, give Team B that one. Being they're struggling. Right, okay, next one. <laughs> next one is uh, what winglet is this aircraft from? Oh, ding. ding. Oh, go on, Nev. Oh, ding, Nev. ding. ding. Uh, 777 X. Yes. Yes. Well done. Okay. Next one. What aircraft is this APU from? Dong. Go ahead, Al. 
Embraer 190. No. <laughs> Passing over to Team A. <laughs> that's, um, that's uh, what do we reckon, boys? D D D D Nev says ding. Go on, Nev. Um, Dreamliner. Well Dreamliner. done. That is correct. Oh, the Dreamliner. Yes, you are. Oh, fire. Wow. All right. Yeah, next one. What airline is this? Embraer 190. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 oh, um, uh, uh, ding, ding yes. says Nev. Ding. I can't see it. I can't see it. It's a place yeah, I can't see it either. I can see it either. Yeah. Right. If, if Nev has suddenly become an airline, then that's great. But <laughs> okay. Dong, uh, it's, it's my turn. Right. No. We, we dinged for shut okay. up. Okay, yeah. go on then, Nick. Okay. Nick. Well, I, was, I wasn't going to answer it. Oh. Uh, no, that's uh, China Southern. Oh, Nev. Very this boy is on the man. Okay, yep. we, we're going to get really, really technical now. Okay. What Go flight on. deck is this aircraft from? Dong, it's a DC-10. Well done, Micah. That is absolutely Bravo. correct. Right, next one is, uh, next question is two, there's a, this is a point here plus a bonus point. So what airline is this and what aircraft is this? Oh, blimey, here we go. Oh, dear. Ooh. Can you put it up again? It just disappeared. Okay. If you um, hang on, if we if we uh, talk for a minute, hopefully that'll come back. Is it? Yeah. What aircraft is this from? What aircraft is Sorry, this? Uh, and uh, the airline and the aircraft. The yeah, airline as well. Oh, you didn't say that. Dong, dong, dong. Go on, go on, Micah. Uh, it's Eastern Airlines, and the uh, I, now it disappeared again, so I can't see it. Okay, go uh, on, go on, go on. Get, go, go again. That's too late. You should have the answer. You don't need the picture <laughs> out there. So it's, e so it's, it's, it's East. It's, it's a, it was a false Eastern dong. Airlines, and it's an A300. His, his dong oh, is no. Uh, we're going to pass that one. I we're... think it's an L1011. Well done. Yeah, hey, well man, done. He's in the same team. You can't pass it to him. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're, I'm going to ha I'm going to award those two points to Team B because they're doing at the minute. So, I mean, pardon me. Really. Uh, we'll, we'll move on now to question number right. twelve. Here what, we go. Which uh, what engine type is this, guys? What engine type is this? Dong. Oh, go ahead. Be Al. Al. It's a broken one. Okay. <laughs> a ding. Uh, go, go ahead, Nick. 1, no, you're, that's incorrect. I can pass that back over to Team B if you want to take a guess. No, he's already had a guess. No, you've got to, you didn't. You can't have two guesses. <laughs> have you ever watched University? Right. Two? Okay. <laughs> right. Well, no one got that one. It was a general. It was a General Electric CF6. Oh, right. Okay. All right. Next Very one. Nice good. and easy. Okay. What, uh, for some question what airline is this? Who cares? <laughs> oh, um, ding. Oh, ding. go ahead, Nev. Nev. Um, uh, Lion Air. Oh, well done, Nev. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. Well done. Oh, wow. I was about to say that. <laughs> right, next one. Now, Nev, if you don't get this Speak next faster. one right, I'm going to be very upset with you, Nev. Oh, so, okay. what. Why, has he seen the picture before? No, not at all. <laughs> uh, question what 14, uh, engine can... type is this? Okay, deathly silence. Good. Dong, it's one from a 737-200. Uh, yeah, what engine oh, type, though, no, Micah? It's Captain Whitney. Ding. And it's a yeah. JT3, is it? No, that's not correct. Cool. Uh, Nev did ding. Nev, you did ding. Um, Pratt & Whitney JT8D. Yes! Oh, okay. Well done, Ooh, Mr. Wow. B. Bravo. Right, next Just one. Just a quick question, but Al, yeah. didn't you used to fly those? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure, but he never did walk around. So yes. that's yeah, why yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was the captain, the first officer mm. who was doing the yeah. walk around. Anyway, okay. next one, very famous engine. This, what engine type is this? Ooh, it's got them stumped. Dong. Go oh. ahead, Al. Rolls Royce RB211. Oh, well Ooh. done. Oh, get you, Mister. Okay. Our penultimate picture. Right, this is a tough one, guys. So, are you ready? What uh, flight deck is this uh, picture from? What aircraft? Ah, right. Ding. Oh, oh go ahead, one Nick. Four. Go ahead, TU Nick. TU-144. TU, what do you say? 144. No, that's incorrect, Nick. Ooh. Sorry. I pass over to Team B. Oh, dear. 
It's an embryo. Um, it's going to be an embryo at 190, isn't it? <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Al, and if, if, Al, if you say embryo 190, I, I will... Um, yes. um, what about a TU154? No, that's also incorrect. It's actually a TU204. A what? Oh, my maths never was very good. Or as, they call, as some people call it, the fake uh, 757. Oh. Well, there we okay, are. so okay. one last picture to go. Where, to, uh, what type or what type of aircraft is this winglet from? Oh, ding! Go ahead, uh, uh, Nev. That looks like a South African Airways seven four seven four hundred, and that is correct. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh dear, bravo! Right, yeah. okay. Two, oh. Very right. impressed. Who gets the prize? Very two, now, two, two audios yes, now. Two audios to come now. Now, what? Aircraft manufacturer uses uh, this particular uh, audio. One thousand five hundred. Ding. Four hundred. Ah. <laughs> well, well done, Nick. <laughs> okay. Okay. One last one. The last question. What uh, airline manufacturer uses this particular call? Out? I'll give a bonus point if you know the aircraft type as well. Tiger Moth. No. <laughs> that sounds a, a horrendous noise. <laughs> dog. That's a mad dog. Yes, a mad no, dog. incorrect, <laughs> Micah. Oh, dear. That was... No one's got that one. So that was a Boeing config warning from a 757. Oh, mm. Oh, there we are. Um, boy, well, boy. Are there any of those oh, still wow. flying? <laughs> <laughs> so no, I'm gonna I'm gonna look through the points now and total up the points, which won't take me long. <laughs> so I can mm. confirm that uh, the winners with eleven points is Team A, Captain Nick, Paul, oh, and oh, Nev. Yes. Oh, well yes. 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 And just watching. Oh. Team B. <laughs> Bravo. Oh, so well done. I demand a recount. <laughs> the, the, I demand um, you trust trust me, you don't one, need one, one, to. You don't, the election if we get a recount, recount mate, the is not the winner. <laughs> <laughs> Quite, yes, indeed. Oh, oh, good. This is that was fun. Nick is not my Prime Minister. Everybody's Prime Minister. It's absolutely. So we have got a very special piece of audio coming up next so as you all know we've got a christmas competition currently running on ptk oh, yeah, yeah. This is to my win winning some entry. rather stunning prizes yes. uh, those including a uh, limited edition plate from with the concord on and no, also, some, uh, also some uh, <laughs> a signed book as well no and don't want that the questions <laughs> and we've got some, some 3d pictures of the red arrows and spitfires as well. definitely don't want those <laughs> what else you got anyway <laughs> Now, in his in his haste to uh, to send his questions in, uh, Captain Nick obviously sent us some audio feedback with the questions, and obviously these are all the correct answers. So if you're listening to the show, yeah, absolutely, get um, your pens out. This yeah, is, get your pens yeah. out because this is gold. Hi there, PT UK. It's uh, Captain Nick here. I just thought I'd give you a quick and early entry for the Christmas quiz. So here are my answers. Now, question one. Oh boy, did you get this thing completely wrong? That's right, we know it wasn't Pepsi at all, because the only thing that got it to Mac 2 was Coke, because things go better with Coke. Anyway, on to question two. What type of aircraft was the Gimli Glider? Oh, God, it was a glider, you fools. Question three. Now, I've seen that Die Hard movie. Hmm. Give me a flight number. One that's low on fuel. Windsor 114, Transatlantic from London. Fuel tax drives a martini. It was a martini, shaken, not stirred. Medium dry martini, lemon peel, shaken, not stirred. Vodka? Of course. A martini, shaken, not stirred. Vodka martini, shaken, not stirred. Would you get me a medium dry vodka martini? What is shaken, that? not stirred. 
Now, question four is easy. The world's longest publicly used paved landing area is US Route 20. It's America's longest road, stretching from Boston, Massachusetts. How do you pronounce that? Massachusetts? That sounds good to me. Uh, to Newport, Oregon. That's 12 states, 3,365 miles. In December last year, a Cessna landed on it in Christmas traffic. He came close to hitting a few cars, but landed perfectly. Now, question five is an interesting one. The world's highest airport is the Sea of Tranquility. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. The Apollo moon lander, yes, it's a lander, and it landed there in July 1969. It's 238,858 miles above sea level. Question 6. There are only two variants of the Boeing 737, the old ones and the very old ones. Question 7. The Airbus A380 entered service with its launch customer late. Much too late. Question 8. The flight number of BA's last Concorde flight was... Hey, how do I unscrew this yoke? I'm going to keep it. Oh, sorry, ground, I wasn't talking to you. Question 9. The very first live PTUK podcast was just before I fell asleep. Finally, on to question 10 about the longest runway at London Heathrow. Now, there's more information required. Now, do you want the Tora, the takeoff run available, the Toda, takeoff distance available, the Asda, accelerate stop distance available, the LDA, landing distance available, and do you want me to include clearways, stopways, and runway and safety areas? And I'm sure that little road that goes off the end of nine left and winds its way round the ILS aerial, uh, I think I could probably use that in an emergency if I had to. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Merry Christmas, PTUK. Thanks, nice so, did I win? Uh, yes, yes, you won yeah. all the points. Yeah. Hey, bravo! Yeah, you won yeah, all I'll, the I'll take won the bottle of gin, please. <laughs> no, no, you, you've won. You've won the opportunity to go flying on the Boeing seven three seven Max relaunch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, that's that fun for Thank you, Al. <laughs> <laughs> you can't literally can't wait. Uh, we're just going to play out uh, another bit of feedback, actually, if we may. Uh, we've got a nice bit of f- feedback now. This time sent from a flight deck i have to say and uh, we have chris griggs to thank for this it's ever so short so here we go merry christmas PTUK. uk just a quick message to say thank you for all the content that you've produced over the last year matt carlos nev amando it's been great to join you on some of the live shows and to meet people at duxford and i look forward to meeting many more at the 300th Go look. Yes, wow, that was awesome. He uh, doesn't want that short. <laughs> he's, 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 <laughs> he, he's on approach to runway 27 yeah, left at Heathrow. Quite right, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, Chris Craig is, is going to be at the 300, so uh, we'll, have mm. the, uh, we'll, we'll catch up with him then. Uh, Great, yeah. so will I. Captain yeah. Al's not coming. Ray! <laughs> oh, stop. Oh. Yeah. I wasn't invited. <laughs> you were invited. You were. Yeah. Cheeky monkey. <laughs> How rude. Honestly, Al, you... Yeah, we you... know your roster's out, so we've organised the 300 <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Al, 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 you're looking a bit peaky there, mate. I yeah. think you might, I think you might be coming down with. Oh with yeah, because that you said it on the show, obviously. Oh, that's, of course, yeah. of, of course, yeah. that's what he can do. Oh. Yeah, because there'll be nothing to to come back to bite him at all. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so we've got one more uh, little bit of uh, oh, feedback. Yes, that was very kindly sent to. So one of the people who was supposed to be joining us today, who wasn't able to, uh, was Brian. But he sent us this message. What we do matters. Over the past few years, I've written a retrospective piece at the end of the year for the Airplane Geeks. It usually airs on the Christmas or New Year's Bits and Pieces show. This is the show we do when the recording of our show falls on a holiday and we choose to take the night off to spend it with our family and friends. 
This year, I was fortunate enough to be asked by Carlos to be on the Plain Talking UK Christmas show, but work has gotten in the way, and sadly, I cannot be on the show live. Therefore, I've taken the opportunity to record this piece so I can still contribute and be a part of this great family. This is the story I was going to present on the Airplane Geek show. I hope they won't be mad at me for having this piece drop here first. Anyway. I was inspired to write this piece based on a segment my fellow contributing editor, Launchpad Mazari, presented a few months ago on the Airplane Geek show. I wish I had the time to research the episode so I could tell you exactly which one to listen to, but again, the time constraints of work have gotten in the way of my social life. Launchpad Mazari was interviewing a guy who worked for a museum or a flight school or someplace where he could interact and inspire children. See, a bit of research on my part could have added a bunch of credibility to that last sentence, and quite honestly, the rest of this piece. But the point this gentleman made is that he promoted a five-foot-tall woman as captain of a major airline. His point, or at least that's what I got out of it, is that young women can do anything they set their hearts and minds to. He used this woman as an example of what's possible. So anyone could become a captain. And that got me thinking. How many of us make a difference in what we do and how we affect the actions of others? When I thought about this for a few seconds, I realized it was a lot. And this medium of podcasting has really enabled a bunch of people who wouldn't have had a voice otherwise to get a voice and inspire others. Personally, I've been touched by a podcast called Undone, which is produced by Gimlet Media. In episode 513 of the Airplane Geeks, you can listen to how this one particular podcast literally saved my life. If you're interested, you can go to airplanegeeks.com slash 513, advance to the one hour, 46 minute, 10 second point, and listen to the segment and hear what I mean. There are others who have inspired and contributed to the betterment of the aviation community. For example, Captain Jeff of the Airline Pilot Guy show and friend of this show has inspired many of his listeners to pursue their passion and become pilots. Every now and then, he will give a shout out to a listener who has accomplished their goal or inspired them to go after their dreams. Dr. Steph also shows how one can marry their profession and hobby and be successful at life. Not only is she a doctor, but she's a pilot, skydiver, marathon runner, and so much more. Actually, Dr. Steph has inspired me to jump out of a perfectly good working aircraft. That segment will be coming up on a future episode of the Airplane Geeks. Captain Nick has inspired so many through his stories he shares in Plane Tales, along with his brilliant history of being not only a fighter pilot for the Royal Air Force, but the Royal Australian Air Force, and then, if that wasn't enough, he became a pilot at what they call Acme Red. Captain Dana has shown how you can be a ramp worker put in all the required effort, and then become a captain for Acme Airlines. His journey is truly amazing, and for those that have listened to the Airline Pilot Guy show, have certainly heard him recount his story many times along the way. I know he has inspired others to follow their dreams and mirror his career path. Many times on the show, he talks about age not being an issue, and that for the right people, you can have a good career flying for an airline if you really want it regardless of when you start. Another friend of the Plain Talking UK show is Pilot Pip. He has a podcast where he talks about aviation safety. I know his podcast has helped to educate pilots and make them safer. A very good friend of mine said he was in a situation where he recalled an episode of Pilot Pip's show and it saved him from a devastating ending. And then there's Captain Al with his Flight Fear Solutions site, He's helped many people get over their fear of flying, or at least get them comfortable enough to participate in the miracle of flight. I know this to be true because Plane Talking UK's very own Matt Smith is a customer of Captain L's. And although he didn't like flying on United in a 757, he at least controlled his fears long enough to join the crew at the Wings Over Pittsburgh Air Show. Another amazing podcaster is Marcus Falter of the Omega Tau podcast. He has inspired many with his ability to take the very technical and make it understandable to mere mortals. Well, most of the time anyway, because I must admit, I still don't understand many of his shows, but I do enjoy listening to them. And then there's our main man, Micah. 
His ability to tell a story has not only educated me about many things aviation and Yiddish, he has the great ability to inspire. I, for one, have been inspired to become a better storyteller and writer. His passion for the craft has inspired me, and I'm sure others, to become better. It's impossible for me to end this piece without mentioning the people from the Airplane Geeks podcast and how they have inspired so many of us. It all started with Courtney. Without him, the Airplane Geeks would not exist. If you haven't, please go back and listen to the first 50 episodes of the show. They are definitely well worth your time and effort. Guest hosts have come and gone throughout the years, but they have made the Airplane Geeks a fantastic podcast. In the beginning, there was Dan Webb, the wonder kid who knew more about commercial airline stats than most. His knowledge at such a young age was truly inspiring to many. Rob Mark, senior editor at Flying Magazine, continues to write and inspire others, not only pilots, but also writers. He promotes aviation safety like nobody's business. And it was my honor to walk the NBAA show in Las Vegas with Rob. It was like being with a rock star. In addition, the Airplane Geeks have inspired several folks to create their own podcasts and spread the word about how cool it is to be in aviation. The Boys Down Under did their part to inspire people. Grant the Balloonatic and Steve took their little segment on the Airplane Geek show called The Odds Desk and turned it into a show of their own, Plane Crazy Down Under. Then they continued to promote aviation in Australia by becoming airshow commentators. I know there is nothing better to inspire kids and possibly change their lives than an airshow. There is also the British podcast called Extended. This was created by former Airplane Geeks contributor Peter Johnson. Peter created a lot of content for his show in a segment called Across the Pond. And another co-host of the Airplane Geeks who created a show of his own is Max Trescott. His Aviation News Talk podcast continues to inspire general aviation pilots around the world. I know this because I have met some of his listeners and they've told me so. Also, personally, flying with the 2008 Instructor of the Year, I finally understood what it meant about the saying, never get behind the airplane, or letting the plane get ahead of you. It was amazing to sit next to Max as he talked through everything he was about to do. He anticipated everything before it happened, It was a real joy flying with him. David Vanderhoof is an amazing historian. His knowledge of aviation history is second to none, and he is a joy to be with in places like the Smithsonian. I really hope his words have inspired others to look at an old aircraft, not as a piece of old material, but as a significant piece of history. And David, I hope you're feeling better and your health continues to improve. I hope you stay well. Last on my list is Max Flight. I cannot say enough about how much he has inspired so many of us throughout the years. Without Max, the Airplane Geeks would have died at episode 50 or so. And not only does Max produce and host this show, he does it for three others. Max is simply amazing. And, for those of you that don't know, the Airplane Geeks have also inspired Carlos to start Plane Talking UK. So really, without the Airplane Geeks, we all wouldn't be here today. So what's the point of all of this? I really believe that what we do matters. Our words matter. Our shows matter. Even if you don't have a show, what you do in life matters. You can inspire someone along the way, and you might not even know it. So why not make a conscious effort to make a difference? It doesn't have to be in aviation. It could be in anything. Participate in your child's Bring a Parent to Work Day. Tell the kids in the class what you do and why it's cool to get into your industry. If you're a pilot, or a mechanic, or a cop, or a firefighter, a doctor, or a nurse, whatever you do, inspire others. It's amazing what you might say or do that will help someone when they least expect it. Or who knows, you might not ever know what you've said will inspire someone. And that's okay. You've made a difference. It's entirely possible that John Clark, the subject of the episode Undone, might not ever know how he inspired me to live, but he did. And for that, his words really matter, and they have made such a positive difference. And to all of you that are making great podcasts, your words matter too. Keep up the great job. So Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, or whatever you celebrate. 
This is Brian Coleman, contributor at large of the Airplane Geeks. Fly safely. Nice one, Brian. What's a Kwanzaa? Kwanzaa is an African-American holiday that was created in the 1970s in California. Ah, that's mm. good. Well, that, that, that was... Uh, Very nice of you, Brian. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks yep. for that. Yeah, that definitely. was great. Yeah. So, uh, listen, guys, it's time to start wrapping things up. Um, what's uh, everybody... Is that know? your Christmas joke of the year? <laughs> oh. Wrapping things wrapping up. Wrapping things up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get uh, Come on, guys. We really have got to get Boeing. Uh, going. Booing. Yeah, well, sorry. Booing. Booing. Yeah, boo is, boo is the definite boos. word. Anyway, so no, I thought the last uh, <laughs> the last little bit of the uh, Christmas show then, so as we are wrapping up the show, I thought it'd be nice for us all to reflect on what we have enjoyed in 2019 the most and what we're looking forward to in 2020. So we'll start with you, Paul. Oh, dear. Uh, what have I enjoyed? <laughs> <laughs> dear. Uh, uh, I don't know. Travel. Uh, as always with me, I, I've enjoyed and I've enjoyed to listen to all of you guys and I hope we keep doing that in 2020 and I'm so happy that we're going to all meet yeah, very I'm soon really for your 300. Yeah, 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 right, me yeah. too, because uh, I can only see you through the screens and headphones and it's... Uh, nah, it's yeah. Yeah, so, and, Pre and, prepare and to I, be very I, disappointed, Paul, that's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> And I wish, and I wish for 2020, I wish we don't see any other bankruptcies like we had this year in the UK. I also wish that corporate gets a little bit uh, better. The two biggest stories for me this year were the almost criminal negligence of Boeing with their, with their Max. So I hope they get <laughs> around that and, and the lack of dare by Airbus by, with killing the 380, which I think is a mistake. So I hope that all this gets a bit better, that people keep flying, keep meeting people. And and one message, a, a last one, I, I because it touched me, it's not exactly related to aviation. I uh, I lost uh, someone recently to mental health. So I, and I've got a few other friends that are, um, that have affected by, by this. So uh, talk to each other or talk to someone who knows about this because because it's, uh, it's it's not a good thing, especially guys. For some reason, we're we're told that the, the only way to solve our problems is to get a pint at a pub. So talk to each other, guys. There you go. Well, Thank you, Paul. Two. Yeah, I mean, how about that, Paul? Well, yeah, well done. I, amen to that, Paul. And uh, well as I say, I, I won't go into too much detail, but uh, I, I'm sort of uh, having a few issues myself at the moment, and uh, so that's really uh, struck a chord, shall we say? Mm. So yeah, that's 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 very very good advice. So Captain indeed. Nick. Moving on to you, best part of 2019 and what you're looking forward to in 2019. Well, it was, of course, uh, retiring, leaving the aviation yes, industry because uh, uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, uh, airline flying uh, doesn't really hold a candle to proper flying when you <laughs> actually start wielding an airplane around the sky in a carefree manner, uh, uh, not giving a uh, two hoots about the uh, lovely passengers who sit behind and pay our wages. Um, <laughs> it is the difference between driving a sports car and driving one of Matt's buses. Oh, Sorry, co coaches. coaches. How coaches. dare you? <laughs> coaches. There you go. It's yeah. like doing no, an fine. Airbus, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah. so re retirement from uh, the airline industry, uh, and I know a lot of people are, uh, would just love to have been in my place and done my job. Yeah. Uh, it was time for me to move on. You're welcome to my seat. So, <laughs> please, there's a free seat sitting for you in Virgin Atlantic. Well, Put in your application form and good luck to you. Well, I'm, I'm sure there are many people who uh, think that it's a, it's a sad world, really, where where you're not able to do that. So it's uh, a I, d I don't think many people could have done it as well as you, to be honest with you, sir. So, so what are you looking uh, forward to for 2020, then, uh, Nick? Very kind of you to say that, Matt. 2020 uh, has more of the same, except, uh, you know, uh, the podcasting world has opened up so many avenues that I am enjoying very much. And I shall continue to uh, enjoy my hobbies, but with greater verve now because I've got all that extra time. Uh, and uh, I have, might have take my new car on a spin around oh. the countryside and visit you all. You never know. Have you reached a point yet where you don't actually remember how you had time for work? 
<laughs> oh yeah, we've we've reached that point and gone well beyond right. it because <laughs> okay. uh, my time is no longer my own, and I'm no. trying to think. Well, I'm supposed to be that? doing things that I enjoy. You know? <laughs> How could this be? I'm not enjoying all of this. So yeah, I I need to just back off and do less yeah. and enjoy my and my spare time more. So uh, of course, when I've got no money, that'll be no problem. Right. Yes. Okay. Micah, same questions for you. I have had a pretty amazing year that I am very grateful for, and uh, so many different things happened. Some of the highlights, though, is I got to visit this year with every member of the airline pilot guy crew. I haven't seen Captain Nick, Nick since uh, last January, but you know we got together in Boston a uh, little less than a year ago, a little more than a year ago, rather. Uh, no, a little less than a year ago at this point, but that was really a fun time. And then Jeff was up here a few times. I. Uh, Dr. Steph came up here and I got to meet Dana who was up here a couple of times and it was just a wonderful great year. Uh, Max Flight came to visit, had a chance to fly with him in a Stearman and then uh, we wow. all got to interview uh, the uh, pilot of 909 the week before we lost that B-17 and while it was pretty, uh, ended up being a rough time, it uh, it was actually very fortunate we had that opportunity because we were able to bring a lot of information to a lot of people about uh, what happened there. And I'm hoping for next year, well, it's been a rough year too because I've had uh, some very serious back issues and some serious back pain that has kept me from doing as many things as I would have liked to have done. And it looks like I'm coming up on some uh, heavy-duty back surgery the uh, second day of January, in fact. That's and, the downside of having a 21-year-old girlfriend, isn't it, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> it's just, um, Good job. So, but, uh, and the, uh, the, while the surgery is going to go be a breeze, I'll be asleep for three or four hours. There's going to be about six months of recovery or so. Oh, right? dear. Wow. Well, we and, wish you well with yeah, that. Man. Yeah, that's health, yeah. man. Really. Hoping that I'm recovering wow. well because I, what I really want to be able to do, and one of the big reasons why I want to go through this is to be able to uh, get over to the UK and visit my UK friends who I haven't seen in uh, oh yeah too long, many many years. Here, Wait. here, 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 here. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, let me know when you're coming. I'm going on yeah. a cruise. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Always uh, and, and, and Al will be on roster. So right. That's yeah, excellent. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. On to Myla. Myla, what have you got to look forward to this year? And 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 what are your highlights of 2019? Uh, well, in the past year, um, personally, I've grown a lot as a pilot, confidence-wise and experience-wise. So that's something I'm really happy and grateful for. Um, this community really helped me find this job and get this position and, and gain this experience. I'm super grateful for that. Um, and next year, I hope to meet everybody in the podcast world, the American guys and, and also some of the UK guys that mm. I haven't met yet and everybody else. I'm really looking forward to the 300th and I'm really looking forward to next summer. So I can give you all this talk yeah. and say thank you. Yeah, and hopefully it. inspire some other girls. Um, Absolutely. We're thinking about uh, yes. trying. Yes, yes. 100%. Go yeah. and do it. For okay. sure. Yeah. More yeah. power yeah, to that. Well done, yes, Myla. more power to that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, Myla. Absolutely. Nev. Nev, Mr. Bounds. The legend. 2019. I mean, other than our breakfast date tomorrow morning. <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward to that, I yes. can tell you. And other than our business class flight home from Dubai, of what's course. been your best part of 2019? <laughs> it's been quite a lot, hasn't it, this year? It's, it's been a funny year for me because the, yeah. the stuff that's gone on. You've been uh, through one hell of a year, haven't you, mate? But actually, yeah. I've changed jobs, and I'm absolutely delighted with my current employer, I have to say. Mm. And uh, they're based over in the other Portland, uh, Oregon, on the West Coast. Uh, so I'm looking forward to going to see those guys in um, uh, January. But this year, just gone, I, it's been marvellous because I've met so many people and I've had so many opportunities. So I've been flying with John Brown and Chris Pratt over in Toronto, uh, in and out of uh, Toronto City Airport um, in his Trinidad Sakata. Um, and 
uh, obviously we went to Seething uh, okay. and we've been to uh, Duxford as well. So all these meetups that we've been doing has been brilliant. So I'm really looking forward to the 300th show yeah. uh, in a couple of weeks' time. And as you said, Matt, uh, you and I are going over to the Renaissance we'll Hotel to tomorrow party, for yeah. a bit of a breakfast, a bit of recce yeah. and shoot some video as well. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to that. Um, but, um, yeah, more of the same next year, I think. And, um, yeah, it's it's been – we've met a lot of new people in, in the last uh, mm. 12 months, I would say. And uh, the listenership to the podcast continues to increase, and that's yeah. really nice. And uh, really is. very much appreciate everybody's uh, Absolutely. comment. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so- Nev, 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 Nev. Since you're the fan of BA, Uh-oh. I'll say something good about it. No, no, I'll say something good. <laughs> the three, the 350 business and use sweet thing mm. it's, a very, it's a very good product well interesting it. enough we went from uh, uh, Heathrow to Dubai on the 351,000 uh, but we couldn't quite afford the the business class suite uh, but we went on the premium economy section the world traveler plus bit and I've got to say I'm very impressed with that mm. but the the, the um, business class suites just looked a little bit cramped from from the outside but I guess once you get in there and you shut your door behind you it's all good, but, uh, the door is almost useless it's very good. I only went to Madrid with it because I mm. didn't want to pay the, the amount, right, to go to yeah. elsewhere. Uh, it's it's really nice. Now, honestly, good good on BA for once. See, I, I think I'm a also, better man. I'm a better man now. <laughs> well, I'm pleased to hear that. But also, uh, Airbus have done a fantastic job with the A350. Yeah. What an aircraft! It's yeah. my favorite aircraft. It my is favorite. so quiet. Yeah. Uh, I went on the the 900 to Helsinki with Finnair, and uh, Carlos and I went on the 1000. Uh, to Dubai, absolutely superb. Yeah. yeah, the rotten lot. They bought it in just after I retired. Well, they knew so, you were retiring, and they thought, well, we don't want him flying. Miserable so, uh, yeah. I, I know how you feel, Nick. I mean, the, the 300th episode, you know, the publication date just after the publication date of my roster. I, I share your pain. Same trick, eh? Yeah. So, so Cap- <laughs> Captain well, Al. what you could have had. Captain Al, apart from, yeah. apart from the best part of 2019 being obviously, um, well, just being fantastic as you are. Um, yeah, what was your best parts of 2019 and what you got to look forward to in 2019, apart from the 300th, obviously? <laughs> well, a, apart, from that, yeah, <laughs> apart from that night that I spent with Carly Minogue, so oh, if right. we just keep it on an aviation <laughs> footing, <Wow>. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I must say that the, one of the aviation highlights uh, was uh, flying in my little aeroplane um, into the Earl of Suffolk's back garden in Malmesbury and Wiltshire, uh, picking up Jonathan Warner and Philip Davis and uh, flying them to our little meet at Duxford. Yeah. That was super fun, um, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. And wasn't the weather um, fantastic as well? I mean, it was just... It was oh, absolutely it was... glorious. Yes, the, the, the back of my neck has nearly healed now from the sunburn. <laughs> Nev's hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that that was uh, a, a real treat to to be able to to meet up with everyone, and uh, you know that the highlight of that day was was watching Pip bounce down the runway. <laughs> <laughs> well, quite yes, yes. Uh, so, um, uh, Carlos, uh, what about you? What was your highlight for 2019, and what have you got to look forward to next year? Uh, it's been it's been loads of highlights for 2019. I suppose the ones that stick out. We had a really good flying barbecue at seething that was really nice every yeah. single one come in obviously like al said watching pip do seven or eight landings <laughs> at once <laughs> very expensive um, and doing very expensive way. yeah <laughs> touch and goes um yeah. uh the dubai air show obviously was yeah. fantastic yeah. um a, a big thanks to you know to those people who uh helped me uh, uh and nev um fly back in business class uh, they know who they are <laughs> uh and also um i suppose just really you know, watching the show grow, it's been it's been fantastic. We've had was that really your friend on. in Seattle who helped you uh, uh, <laughs> on your business class upgrade in in return for a little package? N- no, no, he, he was four <laughs> kilos short or something. I think. Oh, but, um, <laughs> right. Um, uh, twenty twenty. What we got? Obviously, the three hundredth. Yeah. In January, yeah. we've got that to look forward to. But I think. Um, you know, we've got uh, we've because got a great year to look forward you, to. You've uh, changed jobs this year as well, haven't you? Yeah, and I've yeah I've changed jobs. Twenty nineteen has been a big, massive change for me. I've gone from working within a a, um, a print industry for fifteen, nearly sixteen years, to going to to warehousing, and I now yeah. have a job that I enjoy every single day. I have a fantastic boss, and it's really changed my whole 
life personally wow. for me yeah. um my outlook That's on stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. um and for obviously for for 2020 we've obviously we're planning to go and see um dr steph and armando uh next year wow. me and Gemma, we're going to fly across and see see them for a, a break and obviously in september next year we've got the malta air show at oh end yeah of september of you have. yeah yeah so, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Busy year. Sounds good. I yeah. think that uh, that has real opportunity to be a, a good meetup. Yeah, 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 it does, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Sounds like a we've, great. We've booked our flight. We've booked most of us have booked our flights. Yeah. I think um, you you definitely want to try and make it over. Yeah. Um, uh, Unvo- unfortunately for me, they they basically put the when we looked at it uh, with because now we were in a position to try and book it and it's now no longer something we yeah. can afford sadly. But uh, so yeah, so we'll look we'll we'll keep looking because it might come. Yeah, down the flights again, might come down. Know, absolutely. But uh, Matt, yeah. obviously, 2019 has been a uh, the end of 2019 has been a interestingly smoky <laughs> burny kind of year yeah. for you it's but. been a, it's been a funny old year i'll be honest with you um as i say with a lot of, and i said when when it's been you know, there's been a lot of insane uh lows but also inc- incredible high, highs i mean that the uh the car that i'm now the very very proud uh, owner of uh is something that i will never truly get over if i'm honest it was the most uh, amazing thing. as i say it was just like so that is where we're going to wrap up the Christmas extravaganza show for uh, this year. A big thanks to all our guest hosts who yeah. have joined us. Thank you to Jeff, evening. obviously, who joined us uh, a little while yeah. ago. He had to run, obviously. Armando as well, he had to run. And Myla, thank you. I think they were going us. for lunch together, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, that's probably yeah. one of the others. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Al, you got to move your camera down. Yeah. <laughs> oh no no it's just I've just shrunk it's just that uh, it, it's fine. okay that's fine it's at the end of the show it's fine he's uh, an elf <laughs> he's an elf for the day yeah yeah, yeah quite yeah yeah uh, okay uh, so that's it guys yeah. uh, we thanks will everyone see, yeah we've uh, next week it, I, I think it worth mentioning that we are actually premiering our very first episode of uh, the um, uh, the John, John Hutchinson, Hutchinson interview yeah. which we're very very excited about with the second episode uh, have I got this right Ned the second episode will be at our 300th yes so we're going to play it out at the 300th show yeah. and uh uh, my chum at uh, Epson has arranged a very high-powered projector and a uh, very large front projection screen. Very so uh, yes. uh, Al can see it in all its glory. Oh, well, Al's not coming, isn't he? Sorry. Oh, oh, right. oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I'll, I'll Al, how, how's that man flew, Al? Yeah, yeah, how's yeah, that yeah, man flew yeah. coming on? Yeah. <laughs> Me. He's fell asleep. Yeah, he's Sorry, Al. He's gone. Enough. Yeah, that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just when when Nev was talking about big projections, I got all excited. Right. Um, okay. And, and on, that on that bombshell, <laughs> thanks. Thank you again. Thanks again to everyone who's joined us uh, for the Christmas show. Thanks, guys. Have a great Christmas. Take Enjoy care, yourselves. everyone. Happy, Take care. Happy Christmas. Give me nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, you must have found a really old picture. I've got a, a brown moustache. <laughs> oh, sorry, beard. Oh, oh, wow. oh. oh I know. I literally had to That's... grab those pictures from Facebook. Yeah. Oh, dear. Never mind. That was cool. Thank you, guys. Oh, you and your brown moustache isn't something I really want to go to bed thinking about, to be honest, Nick. Oh, oh. You should be so lucky, sweetie. <laughs>